What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. By singing dog. <laughs> Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. Blog Talk Radio. Hey kids, it's Thursday afternoon and I was sitting here thinking of Friday. I don't know why it is, but every time I do my show, I don't know what day it is. It's probably because I'm either too busy or I've taken too much day call, night call, etc. So real quickly, before we get Nikki on the line, I just want to do a couple of really fast announcements, so hopefully she won't mind too much. I want to remind everybody about an event that I kind of will be at this weekend, and I say kind of because... Uh, I was given a film festival pass, but my beautiful little boys are home, and I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty sure they're not going to want to go to the Women's Film Festival in Milwaukee. So just because I can't be here all the time doesn't mean that you can't be there at least part of the time. Um, obviously, we all know I'm big on film, and this is actually a Women's Film Festival, which is even more exciting. It's the Milwaukee Women's Film Festival, and I promised Andrea that I would get the word out on this, so this is me doing so. It's called the Milwaukee Women's Film Festival. The actual website itself is www filmgirlfilm, that's filmgirlfilm.com. On there, you'll get an entire list of every film from this weekend, meaning that the actual opening party is tomorrow at 7 o'clock. So it's September 8th to September 10th. It's at the Underground Collaborative, and if those of you who have been downtown before, you know where the Grand Avenue is. It's the mall. Walk inside the mall, go to the very basement level. That's where the Underground Collaborative is. All three days, 8th through the 10th, I know they've got... um, female-based films, period. And by that, I mean not every single one of them has a female lead, but I can guarantee you that there's a female presence in all of them. So please make it a point to attend. If not one day, two days, all three days, she'd absolutely love it. I'd love it even more. I can't guarantee when I am going to be there, but I do know that I'm coming for the animated films to take my kids, and I'm going to be screening a few others. So do make it a point to show up there, obviously. That goes without saying. I want to remind everybody I posted up my Milwaukee event, which is my two-day screening event. I took most of the films I'm showing in New York City, and I brought them to Wisconsin. Why? Because we don't have what New York has five days a week or seven days a week. So that, again, is September 27th and 28th. I will be there both, both days. I will be hosting all events, and we'll be doing two industry panels, 22 films, along with two Q&As. So please make it a point to show up. 27th and 28th, that's at Inspiration Studios in West Dallas, Wisconsin. Don't want to forget to do that. And, of course, last week of October at the Producers Club is my film festival, which is Art is Alive Film Festival. Don't want to forget that. So now that I've gabbed on way too much and way too long, let's get Nikki on the line and let her talk instead of me. Have you been listening to me this whole time? Hi. I have, and I'm <laughs> loving all that you're doing. This is pretty fantastic. Ooh, it's then. a lot. It, it, it's crazy, 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 crazy. Well, you know, what happens is you're in New York City. We both have been in New York City, and we both have been to um, uh, to see a film. And most <laughs> people here in Wisconsin, we only have so many film festivals in a year. And so I'm like, you know what, why shouldn't I take the work of my friends here, uh, meaning here in Wisconsin, and then bring it here from New York City to Wisconsin and have everybody see the work that my friends do. I'm just, I'm super excited to do this. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work. I'm very tired. Actually, I'm lying here under a blanket because I'm sick. <laughs> I'm starting to get a head oh, cold. No. Like, oh, well, I get to talk to you <laughs> in I'm bed kind of sort of, if you want to call the <laughs> couch back. Oh, the I can be okay, personal. we're going to like moan I, and groan the whole time? Like, Ow. That's exactly right. No, <laughs> you're going to do most of the talking. She totally, oh, I'm, I'm telling you folks. I'm not going to I feel pretty good. <laughs> All is L- well. Let me tell you the backstory. I have to talk about this backstory here real quick. Actually, I had never met Nikki ever in my entire life. My dear friend Lily, our mutual friend Lily, had um, gotten a hold of me, and she's like, you have to go see this film in New York City. And, and in those that don't ever get to New York City much, this happens all the time, where they have film festivals, they have premieres, they have screenings and stuff like that, and I'm big on screenings, so I'm like, oh, sure, let's go check this out, having no idea when I was going to see this movie about Dr. Sarnow that it would change me so much, and not just about the film itself and the book, which Dr. Sarnow has, but in meeting Nikki, because the only thing really, really told me was, you're going to totally get along with her, because she's a musician, and she likes to talk, and you're going to love the movie, and you'll get along fabulously, and we did, and here she is, now she's on my show, and I'm less intimidated, (laughs) because she's in New York, 
and I'm here so she can't yell at me. And oh, she's wait, a little demanding. Were, wait, when was that, that I was intimidating? I don't remember you, that. You are? Oh, my God. I totally <laughs> didn't say that. But you, you are totally intimidating because you're oh, strong. Well, you're very in feminine. Hopefully in a loving, wonderful, good way. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> like, but you're like, very <laughs> feminine. Uh-huh. It's true. You have a very strong presence. And so the first time I met you, it's a little intimidating when you first meet her because you'll see when you go when you go to the gig and you watch her perform and you see her or you get a chance to talk to her, you, you have a very commanding presence. And, in, and that's good for what you do for a living, and it's good for being a musician. So it suits you. But, yes, you scare the hell out of me. So try to work on oh. that before I get back to New York. <laughs> Oh, okay. Well, I felt the same way. So that's so interesting, you know, an incredible strong <gasps> presence, somebody who does a lot, yes. you know, very active and yes. vocal. Wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm scared too. Exactly. So, so I'm like, yeah. okay. So I want to start off by talking about a couple of different things, because obviously there's a whole lot about you to talk about, but I want to start off. I usually try to start off on the personal side of things because you're not just a musician or you're not just a person in the professional world. You're also a person too. So first of all, I want you to talk to me about the fact, I know that you speak English, but you also speak Spanish and Mandarin. What the heck is Mandarin and how do we learn how to speak it? Because I'm like, what's up with that? (laughs) Well, you have to live in Taiwan for two years, which is what I did. But, uh, you know, yeah, (laughs) sorry. (laughs) Uh, No, everybody in New York speaks Mandarin, Cindy. Didn't you know that? We're all intimidating and we speak a ton of Mandarin. (laughs) No. (laughs) Um, But anyway, after I had taken two years of Chinese in college and uh, Mm. uh, they said, do you want to keep going with it? And the next course was ancient Chinese literature. And I thought, no way. And uh, just decided that afterwards I would travel to Taiwan for two years. So I graduated from college, uh, made enough money during a summer, and then uh, took a plane to Taipei and uh, lived in the city, taught English, uh, learned Mandarin, and and luckily kept my Mandarin. You know, I've, I've because I'm a musician, Mandarin is a is a very musical language, mostly tonal, not a lot of grammar, which is great for me because I really stink at grammar. Uh, and it was really easy for me to speak that particular language. So, and I've I've used it ever since, you know, I don't use it quite as much in medicine, but, you know, I live close to Chinatown and I, you know, get to kind of build bridges speaking Mandarin. So it's pretty great. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Only because of the fact that I'm like, oh, let's just go find out. You don't have those books because like I'm trying to learn Italian. So I'm like, I'll get a book learning Italian. So do they do Mandarin for dummies? Like you, I, you like know, they probably I have, a, you know, a million ways to learn it, whether it be a Mandarin for dummies or a Berlitz or whatever. But, you know, but hard to learn, you know, in country, not speaking, that's for sure. So a lot easier if you happen to get someplace. And Taipei is a wonderful city, you know, great food, great people, very open. You know, it was just a fantastic place to be for two years. Actually, originally, I was only supposed to stay there for three months. And then you realize that you couldn't learn enough Mandarin to be fluent in three months. Um, so okay. I ended up, you know, extending and extending until my mother said, Okay, if you don't come home, I'm gonna come and get you, kind of thing. And and then I came back. So and that was it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. that. That's awesome. Now, yeah, when I was yeah, digging was around, crazy. I see. Oh, you were digging. I want to talk about this. Okay. Because I've never heard of this. Uh, you did uh-oh. something called Coffee Mom's <clears throat> Rock Tour. And I'm like, let's talk about the Coffee Mom's Rock Tour because nobody invited me to go, probably because I'm not a musician. But I think that's oh my really good. <laughs> My coffee moms? Well, my coffee yes. moms, okay, are a group of lovely, wonderful, fantastic women who are some of my closest friends um, who actually all met while our oldest children, who are now in college this year, uh, my son went off to college this year, um, probably about 15 years ago, and we've been meeting every Friday morning since. So that is oh, the coffee moms. Oh. But, you know, yeah, so we just – we 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 love each other and we're kind to each other and uh and we're just a group of ladies that you know happen to meet every friday morning so those are the coffee moms and you know what we're we're trying to do is almost make us into a rock group but we're not really and uh okay. and the coffee moms have a wonderful t-shirt with all the places that we spend friday mornings so I we thought, go to a different place I did. yeah yeah you know, it's pretty awesome yeah so that's my coffee moms look at that she's a coffee mom so yeah. it's kind of, it's almost like I'm thinking Carrie Bra- like if you took Carrie Bradshaw and her group of girls from Sex in the City and you took away the sex and you took away the drinking, you kind of have <laughs> you the took same away the thing, booze too. right? <laughs> Just a bunch of caffeinated moms. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's, that's pretty so much what cool. we are. We're we're having a really good time, and we're going to a lot of different places. You know, we have uh, we have you know one coffee mom who is a, a chef, and so you know she's always scoping out the places for us, and you know, and we get to go to new places many Friday mornings. So it's been it's been fun having this uh, ability to you know just meet the same group of women every week. You know, I also I feel like you have to you have to make time to meet people. Like so, a lot of people who I don't get to see consistently, I actually meet them the same time each month, like the first Sunday of the month for two hours or whatever it is. Because if you put it in your schedule, then your family somehow expects that you're going to do that, Um, and then you expect and they expect. But other than that, you know, trying to figure out a random time to get together uh, ends up being just really hard. And and I think nowadays, especially with the way the world is going, we need to really figure out times to be together and stay close so amen so that is one way amen (laughs) i do i agree with you 150 percent now you know i'm gonna have to put you on the spot and i wish i was in new york because i guarantee you her face is going to be 18 shades of red after this picture no uh, when i post it's coming wait for it so Uh i post it up on my page and oftentimes i'll put a whole you know like i'll put up all my shows as you saw for this week i had the three different shows and your picture is on there. So, of course, my dude friends are like, oh, she's got to be single. Well, here's a hint, folks. Wait for it. Yeah, she has a husband. So <laughs> I just wrecked half of everyone's night now because you're not single. So tell us a bit about, um, obviously, I, I have not formally met them yet, but obviously your children, Lily and Adam, and, of course, your husband. We want to talk about this a bit because I'm big on this. On my show, I'm like, people don't seem to get, you know, when you have a regular job and you're a musician, et cetera, how instrumental sometimes it is to have a loving and supportive family that nurtures you personally, which means professionally you're in a better capacity. So tell us a bit about the family, the kids, and, of course, the husband, because she's not single. I said it again, (laughs) not single. (laughs) No, I am very actually not single. I've been married for 20 years, uh, August 17th, to a a wonderful man named Ted uh, who is – you know, very different from me in many ways. You know, he's a homebody. He's the one who takes care of the kids. He's the one that does all the cooking and shopping. You know, I mean, really, I, I have been able to do all that I can do because, you know, Ted is 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 here and stays here and is very, very solid. Uh, and also doesn't get, you know, jealous or intimidated uh, by what I do and, and the big life that I'm going for. So it's a pretty great thing. Um, and I have these, you know, two really fun teenagers. Um, you know, Adam, who just uh, went off to college, he's at SUNY New Pulse right now, and uh, and he's really great. We just recently came back from a mother-son trip. We went to Dublin and uh, and Scotland. Uh, we were in Edinburgh wow. for, the, for the Fringe, which was really, really fun. And, sure. uh, and my daughter, Lily, is also a singer, dancer, actor, and she's at LaGuardia right now in 11th grade. Um, and I think I think things go well, especially with them as teenagers, because I don't have any expectations that things are going to be bad. And I think that that we as people somehow believe that teenagers are going to be t- difficult because, you know, they have their own minds and they're going out a lot and doing their own thing. And, and I don't I don't I just assume that everything's just fine and whatever whatever we come across, we're going to figure out together. And, you know, I try to stay really quiet mm-hmm. and not give a lot of opinions and and stay as close as possible. So it it's been it's been fun, you know. I have a really good time. I'm silly and stupid and the stupider I look and act, the better things go and you know, the second I try to sound, you know, either important or smart, things start going bad. So so that's how that's how that goes in my house. And it's been fun. Listen to you that. Know? That's, that's cool. Now, is Ted creative in any venture, meaning like singing, painting, et cetera, is, or you're more the creative and he's – Yeah, no, no, Ted is, Ted is a finance, business, accounting kind of guy. You know, he's a straight shooter. Yeah, yeah. Although yeah. You know, he is really funny, and, you know, and I've seen him bust a move at some weddings. So, you know, Ted, Ted, can, <laughs> Ted can be fun, you know, even though you look at him and you might bust not think move. it. You know, he's a – you know, he, all of a sudden he's like surprising people. Like you know, he's busting out some move somewhere at a wedding we went, or a, or it was a bat mitzvah we went to recently, and and my friends were like, I didn't know Ted could do that. <laughs> I was like, neither did I. That is way cool. That is yeah. so cool. I love yeah. it. That's awesome. That's it. That is yeah. very very cool actually. Now yeah, it's, it's been really fun. Stated, 
That's okay. I, I know that your music covers things such as your marriage and motherhood. So I guess I'm curious about that because I've written about my kids and they're like, yeah, whatever. It's not as big of a deal. No, do they, do they embrace that? And I think that's totally cool that you kind of incorporate some of that parts of your life into your music. Cause that's, uh, I think it's it depends on the that. kid. <laughs> my daughter, Lily, okay. uh, the singer dancer, right? Exactly. You know, yeah. she, she is, I don't know. She's always there. She's got my back. She's my best promoter. Um, you know, she'll tell everybody about my gigs. She'll also give every homeless person in the city my card and my cell phone number. You know, so she is All like right. the the number. I know she's so funny. She's like the the number one promoter of me. She comes to every gig and she's like a like a fixture yeah. there. Whereas my son Adam, you know, the older one, will not come to the gigs. He's absolutely mortified by me. There's one song that I I sing called uh, Don't Mess Around With My Boy, which is about Mm -hmm. somebody bullying him in the schoolyard and me like raising hell at them. Like, you know, that, you know, the wrath of a mother comes at you. It's kind of a, you know, a a mom's rock and roll, you know, Joan Crawford kind of song. And and he's just like, that is not about me. You know, so I have to like preempt it every time. I'm like, this is loosely based on not my son. You know, (laughs) like it's, just like that so so it's really so it really depends on the kid you know uh, Ted my husband's there every time he's the one selling the shirts and you know keeping the merchandise collecting the socks and uh, and my daughter as well but you know my son is you know He's he's just still he's still pretty mortified. I asked him at what age he thinks he'd be over it, and he told me about eighteen. So he's going to be eighteen in November, and then I'm going to have like a special gig that I can invite him to. So we'll see oh, what happens there. I know cool. I'm going to torture him a little bit. <laughs> you know, Nikki and I are relatively similar in that we have about fourteen minutes in our regular everyday life for any kind of me or personal time. So I guess I should probably ask that. It's very important. I don't think people realize in the music business or even in the creative business. I've often said how important it is to make that that me time, even if it's ten minutes, half hour, hour, whatever have you. Sometimes you need to disconnect. So what does Nikki do to disconnect? What are some of those things that that we would find you doing just for me time? Um, you know what? I, I I make time every morning to meditate. Um, okay. Right now, there is a um, I do something called Kundalini Yoga, uh, which is what they call the mother of all yogas. But um, you know, but but there is a a certain what they call sadhana or meditation that should happen every morning. And and unless I get to meditate every morning, you know, things don't go quite as well or as smoothly as sure. they they would or could. Uh, if I did meditate and uh, and I, I, I don't know I'm a, a firm believer that you you get to you know kind of shift your thinking in some ways so that you can make your life go well or change how it is you've woken up in the morning whether you woke up with some fear about something or some worry which is really really common you know that you actually get to to you know think about it and shift it a little bit and the meditation really does that for me so much. Yeah, you know, right now I'm I'm doing a meditation to not react, uh, which I'm trying to do for 40 days. And um, the reason why I chose that meditation was because, you know, I feel like like people get to choose the kind of reactions they have to things, um, whether whether they want to react or not. You know, and and it is a choice, even though you feel like it's no choice at all. And you know, this particular meditation has really been helpful with that. And I've been doing that nice. uh, with my patients at uh, the soup kitchen, and I also work at an mm-hmm. LGBTQ teen shelter. Um, you know, just to really do that the thing where they don't have to react either, you know, that, that if sure. it brings up feelings in them, they actually don't have to, you know, react in that same way that they've always reacted, which hadn't been helpful. Gotcha. Okay, and yeah. that was what I was going to do is that's a perfect segue into you as in the professional world, clearly, because, first of all, we all want to believe that Nikki makes $1 million a year being a classic <laughs> musician. Um I'm here to tell you oh, I don't well, think that's sorry. happening because I've been with her. I know. I, I I can tell you she's not quite at the million dollar mark yet. She's getting there, but she's not quite there. Which means she needs to have a day job like all the rest of us. Surprise with that one. So first yeah. of all, because I didn't know about the LGBT thing, let's talk about that. Tell my audience about that a little bit. Tell them what you do, how to find them. Can we help? Because that's important. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm working at a, a 
a center called Ali Fournay, which is an LGBTQ teen shelter. Uh, and I'm seeing patients there. I actually have a medical office within the shelter. And uh, I go there with a case coordinator, a social worker, a psychiatric nurse practitioner, a nurse, and a medical assistant. And we have a full team that goes there and takes care of these young people who uh, have been nurtured so beautifully by this particular place, Ali Fournay. And it's an organization that you definitely have to look up if you don't know it. Um, uh-huh. So um, And so I see patients there, and, and I also see patients at a soup kitchen on the Upper West Side as well as uh, right. some patients on the street. And, you know, a couple of other things. You know, I uh, teach at a, a free clinic uh, affiliated with NYU, and I also teach at a residency program. So I'm kind of all over the place. I always say I'm, I'm the homeless doctor because I basically don't have a place that I can really hang my hat, although there is an office, but I'm so rarely there. So. Oh, no, I understand. I totally get it. Now, please explain to the listening audience because, of course, they've not met you. So when we speak about being a doctor, now you see why I'm afraid of her? She's got <laughs> doctor on her name. I don't. I don't even have doctor radio. I don't have doctor writing. I don't have doctor anything. She's a doctor. But if you see her, she totally doesn't frighten you. And she doesn't. What's cool about you is you don't talk in doctor language. Like, she needs 27 cc's, blah, 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 and she's suffering from blank, blank, blank. Because then whenever right, they right, talk, right, right. it's like, what? What did you say? Like, what the hell does that mean? Oh, I just said hell on radio. Oh, I can do that. It's internet radio. So oh, okay. explain to the folks, if, they were, if, they, if we were trailing you, or let's say that we were shadowing you for the day, what would we see the good doctor actually doing? Just give us a, a bird's eye view of what you do in a day in terms of how you treat individual patients. Huh. Um mm-hmm. Well, you know, because most of my practice, uh, I run the homeless services for the organization that I work for, uh, most of my right. practice are kind of at places where, you know, um, people who are either uninsured or don't have places to live um, congregate or, you know, somehow meet, like the soup kitchen um, on the Upper West Side called Broadway Presbyterian Church. Shout out to that soup kitchen because uh, they call it the soup kitchen to the stars. Uh, they get a lot of fresh produce oh. from many farms that, uh, that you know, kind of glean whatever's left and give it to them uh, for a CSA as well as for their food. And Chef Michael Ennis is a wonderful chef who actually chooses to be at that soup kitchen. So just to let you know, they're serving a couple of hundred meals three days a week, and they're doing pretty fantastically. Wow. Um, but what would end up happening for me is that I would come there, you know, pass a large group of mostly guys and some women and uh, and head to my little office in the back of the soup kitchen uh, with my team and people would sign up to see the doctor and um, and it's not only the people at the soup kitchen because word travels very quickly if you're a doctor for homeless people uh, and provide sure. free care so the whole you know homeless population of the Upper West Side basically knows where I am prob- probably at every moment but um, and they sign up uh, to see me, and then you know I'll I'll see just about anybody for almost anything. I'm a family doctor, and I'm a bit of a cowgirl, so you know I try to take care as, of as much as I possibly can independently without having to send people to other places. Um, just because I, I think that you know they might get less than warm receptions in other places, or maybe not understand the situations that my patients are in. And so if they're a diabetic, and you know they are putting them on a very complicated insulin regimen and a diet, you know, that might not be possible for my clients. And so I have to, you know, really think creatively and elegantly all the time about what might make sense for them. You know, yeah, I'm also trying to incorporate a lot of, you know, alternative and integrative therapies. And so, you know, this meditation that I did to not react, I, I, you know, would do with a group of people if I could, uh, or if anybody was interested. Uh, I've got, uh, I studied acupuncture when I was in Taiwan, and so if somebody comes in with, you know, some kind of, you know, muscle something or other, and, you know, they're not interested in going on, you know, Motrin and a muscle relaxer, I'm happy to do acupuncture to relax the muscle if if they need be. Um, I have a couple of homeopathists that are coming with me just because there are so many kind of autoimmune diseases that I can't really do very much about and lots of... Um, you know, just just lots of things that Western medicine, you know, just doesn't have a vocabulary for, nor an ability to take care of in a in a way that you know that would be 
helpful to some people depending on what it is. I mean, I think there are lots of great things uh, that Western medicine does, but there are also lots of things that they can't do. And, you know, I just I need to provide the, the ability for my patients who normally wouldn't get that ability to have that. So I'm constantly trying to get them uh, things that somebody who m- might have insurance or might have enough money to get can get. Gotcha. I understand. And I actually want to talk about this because this is an important issue because I, uh, months and months ago, I actually drove down with about 20 boxes that I donated. There's a uh, homeless, I don't know if you're familiar with Sister Grace. She works in Rochester. She has a homeless shelter there. And I'd driven down. And one of the things that I, I learned from her because she came on my show, and this is important, and I'd like you to address this because I think oftentimes, and because New York City, sadly, I've noticed the the homeless community has gotten larger and larger and larger. And what I think people tend to forget is, if you want to speak a bit about this, because I think people have become somewhat uncomfortable with dealing with the homeless. And, and Sister Grace taught me one of the things that they're really looking for is their dignity and their their they want people to recognize them still as people, not just faces in a crowd or somebody sleeping on the street, et cetera. So maybe if you could share with us some of the impressions or some of the things that we can do besides the obvious, giving donations, things like that, that can help homeless communities feel as though they're still citizens, they're still people. Make sense? Right. Right, right, right. Um, that's that's an interesting and, and kind of deep question <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. because it's hard to do moment to moment as you're walking in the street, you know, sure. especially sure. either if you're trying to get somewhere or you're feeling, you know, frightened or threatened or whatever it is. Um, so, you know, my feeling is that if you have any opportunity to talk to somebody, so if you end up going to the soup kitchen and volunteering there for a while, you know, or, you know, have the ability to really kind of get to know some people, I think that's really helpful. I, I know that there are other people who kind of adopt people that are living on the streets um, who they see consistently and, you know, might give them um, either some food or some clothing or a jacket or a blanket and just get to know that person a little bit. Um, I, I think that, that you'll you'll be able to tell that, you know, that, that people don't actively choose this situation, um, that that there are lots of things that ended up happening in their lives in order to bring them to that situation, and then this was the best that they could possibly figure out for whatever their, you know, situation as young people or, you know, even as adults had been. So, you know, and I, and I, I think that if, if we can kind of, you know, get over the idea that somehow, you know, that homeless people are either um, completely crazy or drug addicted, uh, and also right. that somehow they've, you know, done something to get into this situation. Uh, then I think we might be able to look at it differently. But you know, but 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 while we're all trying so desperately to, you know, not be thought of as you know crazy or homeless or whatever, that we have to separate ourselves as much as possible because nobody wants to somehow be believed as a, a person who you know, has any mental struggles or whatever it is, um, we tend to make sure that we've created a huge divide, you know, between us and them. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? <laughs> a lot. Yeah, it's no, a it lot totally to did. I, I know what you mean. But I, I think yeah. we, we nowadays in today's society, we just take for granted some of the things that we have, that we have a home and that we have heat and that we have certain things that people right. walk around day in and day out of that are so desperate for, you know, and now we're living in, sadly, God help them all, but tons and tons of friends who are being uh, hit by natural disasters yeah, left, right, and side. Yeah. So it's so yeah, crucial, sure. folks, if you're listening, yet yeah, remember how lucky you are. Just the fact that yeah. you're still breathing and you have a home to live in, you know, right, and people right, right. to talk to. Except right. for those and that I, I never take like, so anything scared. for granted. Anything. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, no, seriously. And I think the other part about it is that I also don't believe that I in particular deserve all that I have, you know, that I have this thing because I deserve it. You know, I just happen to be really fortunate enough to have been born in this situation, you know, as this person, you know, in in this iteration. You know what I mean? Like, like I, I could have been born, I mean, I'm a Jewish woman. I could have been born in the 20s in Germany. You know what I mean? Like, like I know. It, it could have been I know. anything, you know, so, so I don't have these things because I... I deserve it in some way. You know, I am just extremely fortunate uh, to be able to have the opportunity to, you know, to do music as something that I love or to take care of people and have been able to go to medical school like not everybody gets to go there you know so I just right. I feel really fortunate every day and and I never forget that so it's when well, I know one good. of the things important to you You've been doing this for 20 plus years easily. And yeah. so I, yeah. I know that you've said before that you're looking to make some form of 
for, of global change. So if I were to ask you right now, if there was something, if, if one or 10 people and you took in all 50 states and, and 10 people dedicated themselves to making some form of global change, what would you, what would you want to see happen? What's one thing that one person can do that can make a mass change? Is there such a thing? <laughs> I, I know, know it's a good question, you know, isn't it? But I'm like, girl, she wants to make change. It's a great question. I, you know, but I honestly don't believe that we're meant to do things alone anymore. You know, so we right. as a collective group need to figure out how to get together and really fight for what's human. Um, and so, you know, I think that we should have a universal health care system in this country. Like, it's criminal mm-hmm. that not everybody has health care, and we somehow have decided right. that some people deserve it and some people don't at the expense of what this health care cost and all the poor outcomes and all the insecurities that it, co- you know, cost people. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. It's just a very particular kind of greed that we need to just remember that we have to keep fighting for, you know, that there is a particular truth about this that we just have to, you know, keep knowing that we're heading towards. And and so so a universal health care plan is definitely one of them. You know, I, I think the... And, and I think once you have a universal health care plan, hopefully, um, then, you know, people can think a little bit better about the food we're eating and then think about the food industries that are, you know, somehow um, kind of taking over the, you know, the food production right now. Like, I think we can have a real conversation about people and their well care as opposed to, you know, just putting Band-Aids on, on things that are, you know, trying to profit, you know, large corporations. So... That's kind of my feeling about that. You know, and also just you were talking about this before. There are, you know, 40,000 people who are homeless and in shelters in New York City. I I mean, it's Mm -hmm. it's just it's unconscionable, you know, and that's not including the people that are actually on the surface or out on the street. It's it's just uh, amazing to me, you know, how many people are out there and, and how we can let that happen as a as a collective country. Like, it's just, you know, it's just mind boggling. Oh, yes, it is, without a doubt, absolutely. And yeah. before I forget to ask Miss Doctor here, because just so you first know, she attended both the New York Downstate Medical Center College of Medicine, but she also went to the University of Michigan. So this I find interesting because your BS is in microbiology. So I'm like, how often does this woman really use microbiology? Not that I know what the heck it is, but it sounds important, so I guess we should ask. How often are you using that microbiology? Are you implementing oh, my that? Oh, <laughs> Uh, I mean, I use it once in a while because when I'm at my office and I do have a microscope, you know, I'll look at different fluids under the microscope and then make a decision about how I'm going to treat. So, you know, but I think any of us can do it. So microbiology was just kind of an interest that I had in college um, and a science that, you know, that kind of headed me in a direction where, and originally I wasn't going to go into medicine. I mean, I took a lot of time off after college, but, um, but heading me into some kind of healthcare field. And uh, and that was just uh, and I had a, you know a really great you know lab partner who ended up becoming a boyfriend and, and he somehow oh, got me through all the really hard labs. Oh, that a great I, lab partner I that know. I was fooling around with. Oh my God! Doggy. Thank God for him. You know he's the guy that like ended up at Caltech and he was like the real smarty. I was just like, okay, Aww. I'm gonna do this. You know, I'll just keep going. He's like I'm not that smart. I'm just gonna. I know. Here. I know. <laughs> not like him though. You know, I mean, he's the guy that can like you know see the see the electrons around the corner. I don't know. It was pretty crazy. I get so, it. Well, I have yeah. to before I forget, and we play a song of yours, one of two, because I have two that I'm gonna play today. Um, I wanted to ask you this because my daughter actually um, is young. She's at UWM. She's in her third year. And so she's trying to study to become um, almost like a Dexter. Remember that show? Only not a serial killer. We yeah. all. Um, <laughs> you know, she's doing that whole blood splatter analysis thing. So any good advice for her? Because obviously it's not like becoming a doctor, but this whole thing is weirding me out. And I'm like, she's working a job. She's going to school. And I'm like, I want to try to relieve some of that pressure for her. So, like, is there any kind of easy step for her to kind of take some of the stress off because there's so much go- so much studying and so much stuff to learn and, and she gets a little inundated. So I'm like, well, who better to wait, ask wait, than so, Dr. Tell Drew Tell me here. again. Wait, Dr. explain Nikki. that one more time because I'm, I'm not That's quite okay. understanding. She's, what okay, okay, so when she's in college now, she's she's essentially going to be that person that analyzes blood. So, like, for instance, oh, let's say there's a crime uh-huh. scene so or she's a murder so she's going to do something like that. Yeah, okay. that's what it sounds like from what her major is. And I'm like, she's, she just, she seems to keep saying, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. But I just feel like she's flooded. So I'm like, is there any way, if you can remember back when you were studying and, 
and dealing with all this. Any good tips or advice for a youngster at her age? Because she's a whole of 22 now. And I'm like, if I can do anything to try to find out how to make her life easier, so who better to ask mm. than Nikki? Nikki has the answers for everything. Oh, is that it? Wow. <laughs> I'm so glad that you think right so. There. <laughs> oh, my God. So you better um, have I that mean, answer a... right now. God, well, being a young adult is really hard because it it definitely feels Mm -hmm. like you have to figure everything out and everyone's telling you all the time that this is the best time in your life and, you know, you still don't know what you're going to do exactly and where you're going to live and who you're going to be with. So it's really hard to begin with. Um, You know, I think think that thing about really listening to somebody fully, you know, so if she's – if she's giving you, like, you know, where all her stress is and you get to really listen to her without taking on her worry and her worrying about making you worried, I think that's pretty helpful. <laughs> so that's the best I can think so You know, so and maybe go for so a jog. Wait. <laughs> I get it. I do. I get it. Yeah. I'm just That's being a mom thing. right now, and I'm worried. No, totally. College. And you get God. to be a mom. Yeah, and that way you get to Thank call you. me and be like, oh, my God, my daughter, my daughter, my daughter. And when she calls you, you could be like, yes, honey, I'm right here. You know? Like, oh, my God. You get to do all that screaming away from her so, so she doesn't have to take on your stress and your work. I have to admit, I'm maturing. And you know how that is when you've been a long-time mom because I was like, okay, because she brought another boy over the other day, and I'm like, oh, good God, now she's bringing another boy over. And she brought him over, and then I come to find out that apparently she's already 22 and dating men that I would date. Like, literally, he has all the same qualities of my ex. And I'm like, oh, no. She's now starting to date the men that I'm not dating anymore. And I'm like, no. Oh, my so, God. yeah, I'll Didn't definitely have to call you happened? and yell at you first. I know. <laughs> I know, right? You think she learned yeah. from me? But, yeah, apparently she's taking on a little too much of mom. Okay, oh, we're going to play the first God. of two songs so that I have time to play two Wait, different songs. Wait, which one are you playing? I, I don't even know what you're putting on. Songs. Yeah, I'm, putting, I'm about to get into that. I'm going to give you a little oh, segue. Oh, I'm going to have you explain. <laughs> there's one of two songs, and the first one I'm going to play because it's totally rad because the first time and then the second time I watched it, not only did I smile both times, but I'm like, oh, my God, did she just say that? Because, of course, we're going to play the rap id response. Oh, no. So, no, you are yes. not. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, man. Because I can. It's my show. <laughs> Come on. You're trying to get this out there, aren't you? No, you're no, on no, radio. 60,000 people. I know. I need, I need that particular song, guys. I do need that to go viral. And, and not, and not for you. me necessarily, but for, you know, the young people that are listening to rap music that is so incredibly right. disrespectful to women. Um, and the reason why I wrote that song is because my son was listening to, you know, some rap. I can't remember. Was right. it, you know, I'm not going to say the name because I actually love rap music. I mean, I, I, I was okay. listening to Arrested Development. I, I love that stuff. But, um, you know, but he was listening to it and all of a sudden everybody Am I allowed to say a bad word? I can. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> you just said hell. And so my son, you know, oh. and, and every word was like, this bitch, this whore, you know, I did that to her, and I did I that to that. 10 of her friends, and then I ditched her. And I was like, what am I listening to? And my son's looking really happy there, and my daughter's getting into it in the back seat, And, you know, and I'm like, do you guys hear the words? And they're like, yeah, but the beat's good. And I feel like everybody – they're willing to kind of let go of the words in order to have a good beat. And I'm like, well, how about I put in some good words here and tell people what they can say to me and what they can't and put in a good beat so somebody can listen to my good beat uh, with words that I think are very empowering for young girls in particular. Because even if somebody says they're not listening to something, it's still coming in. The message is still there, you know, that we are somehow an object for the use of others and I needed to contradict that as best as I possibly could. So who better than a mom rather than a, a young person or a young girl uh, mm-hmm. to do that? And so that's why I wrote mm-hmm. that. But it's not necessarily indicative of all that I do. So, <laughs> you know. Well, no, but we do want to get it out there for the reasons of, like I said, when I watched it, I was like, oh, my God, she just said that. And it's totally a Nikki song. I'm like, if you knew her, you guys, you would totally know that this is totally her. I just I can't yeah. help myself. Okay, so I'm going to give you a two-minute and 20-second break to rest your mouth and my my mouth and then we will play it. This is Rap Id Response. So let's take a listen. What 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 am I hearing here? What well, what did you just say? You did not just say that. I can't believe that you would say something like that. Well this is my rapid response. I ain't your bitch, I ain't your whore. And what's more you can't ignore I'm your mother and your sister. Sorry you get twisted, can't resist my hip, my tip, my lip, my really big behind. And if your piss and rises, 
I played that book for a couple different reasons. First of all, to promote you to go to her YouTube channel because um, before I open up my mouth, I should double check. So is it actually posted up online so you can watch the video? Because, folks, you really should see the video because it adds so much more to the song. Not that the song's not good, but you need to see what she's doing, which is the posting of the signs and seeing all that. Plus, watching your – it's so you, your mannerisms, the way you talk. <laughs> I'm like, this is so Nikki, it's scary. So that's why I guess I should ask. Is it up on – is it on the? Is it on your YouTube channel? So like people that are listening can go to this? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Got it. And we'll tell you. What <laughs> and to you find can click on it through so. my website, or you know, just go to okay. Nikki and the Human Element YouTube channel. But right. I don't know. Did you? Do you? I'm sure that you saw after all the interviews that yeah. I did with guys. Um, I did. You know, just kind of having them say what it is that they love about women, because I really didn't want to come in right. with a negative thing. I, wa- I wanted to just, you know, because people, when when asked to do the right thing, and when asked to think about, you know, how it makes somebody feel, they, they almost 100% of the time will do the right thing. Uh, and every right. guy, I went around the city, just a quick shout out to the guy who did the video, video uh, his, oh, his yeah. rap name, because he's a rap artist and pretty fantastic, is M. Smia. Uh, and I call him Patrick because I'm like his mom. And, uh, and every, every person we spoke to out there loved to say wonderful things about women and really just, you know, revered women and, and not in that way like, you know, that you think that they're, you know, there's something to be taken care of or watched over, but but in that very powerful way. And I just needed to get that message out. And you did well, I have to say. And you did it very much like yourself, meaning that if you knew her, folks, you would know this is it's a powerful message. It's done in a short frame of time, but it's it's very well done. And I'm not gonna lie about that. I'm very very impressed with it. Now, granted, if you don't like the swear words. Well, that's too bad, I guess. But Sorry that's all part of the that. equation. Because she's making a point. It's one of those things. So we want right, to talk right, about right. this I was just now. copying the swear words that I heard. And just another quick exactly. shout out to uh, Rob Talby, who is my wonderful, you know, recording engineer, producer, kind of co-conspirator right. and you know, in, in all of the songs that I record. But in this one in particular, like he really helped me kind of identify my, my, inner, my inner rapper and, you know, taking the, my Bronx mm. roots out and really, you know, doing it old school. And, and I really appreciated that. So just a, a, Very a quick shout out for him. Yeah. That's cool. Now, I want to talk about this because you've said before, as we started to talk about, which is um, we want to talk about your music covering four different areas. Obviously, we said the marriage, motherhood, also medicine and music. So talk to me a little bit about, um, because I'm a a writer as well, so oftentimes I'll go to a bar or I'll go to an incident or an incident will happen or something will inspire or move me enough to say, you know what, I put these on these words on paper and do something. Of course, I don't know how to do it musically. 
So let's talk a bit about your process, meaning some of the best ideas. Have they come from the best moments or the worst moments in these four parts of your life? And why is it important to you? I, I get the motherhood and the marriage thing. But why are all of these four areas so important to you versus, you know, some of the some of the other artists that are out there that are singing pop songs or singing other songs that are just fun dance songs and stuff? Because you're pretty type specific about what you want to cover and how you want to cover it. Right. I mean, I, I'm willing to cover anything, and I do have a couple of long, love songs out there, but not very many. Oh. I, I mean, what? <laughs> there are a couple of them. I, I don't know if you've seen them or heard them yet, but they are definitely there. Um, you know, I, I'm just trying to, like, you know, portray – a person who just has a life, you know, and what I mean by a life is that, you know, I'm not falling in and out of love at every moment. My heart isn't breaking at every second. I'm not being traumatized all the time. Like I have a good life, you know, it has its struggles, but it is good. Um, And that life brings, brings along a lot with it. Like, you know, worrying about your son, like I said, being bullied or, Mm -hmm. you know, or, or going through menopause, which is another song that I've written, you know, Mm. and I don't hear people talking about that stuff. So here I am, you know, a postmenopausal woman, I'm saying it, you know, in my 50s, really trying to do some, you know, rock and roll and rock and roll for people who love rock and roll. Like, you know, my (laughs) friends are still going to the Billy Joel concerts and still seeing Fleetwood Mac, you know, still running to Stevie Nicks and, you know, and whoever else. And so here is some new rock and roll, you know, for people that actually have have okay lives my lives are going well you know so that's that's so awesome yeah so i was just wondering if you could do a perimenopausal song since we all know if you listen to my show that i'm seriously in perimenopause and not liking it okay (laughs) here's a hint there's nothing fun about this except i'm short fatter uh uglier lost my sexy and i get hot after i drink wine and even more hotter apparently after more wine oh my god it's frustrating it's like seriously funny that's your impression of you but that's so not my impression of you you know i mean you are just like thank you i think I, no, seriously, like you are just so out there and fierce and sexy and wonderful mm-hmm. and, you know, and I'm sorry okay. that, you know, that we women have gotten this message that either the second we're going through menopause or if something is shifting in our body that, that we're not okay anymore. And uh, right. and I'm trying to embrace that. But but you, you, my friend, who do a million things <laughs> and who are always redefining yourself and doing wonderful mm-hmm. things, you know, mm-hmm. it's... It, I, 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 that's that's all your stuff, you know. Where Perry It is and, my stuff. I'm working on stuff. it. I'm like, you know. I know. You know. <laughs> yeah, if you're like no, thirty and you want to go out wine and dine me, that might help getting that little sexy part back. Oh, I'm like, oh, I don't maybe know. I should get thirty. Cause its own problem. <laughs> You've got sixty thousand <laughs> yeah, listeners, right. so you can ask. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I shouldn't throw that out there. Let's actually that one right now, folks. I'm too damn busy to have a love life right now. Between these, all this stuff yeah. going on, it's like, oh my gosh. But no, I give you a lot of credit for tackling because some of the things that you seem to want to embrace are very similar to the things I do, which is taking on things that aren't necessarily the popular part of the group, but need to be said, need to be dealt with, need to be talked about because everybody goes through them at one point in time or another, which is very, very cool. Now, I want to talk about, because of course she's not just a singer, but she's also a guitar player. So I don't know a whole lot about your background in that. Were you self-taught or did you actually take lessons or how did that come about? Oh, uh, well, it, it came about because um, originally I, I had another band. So I had been in bands for a long time, mostly cover bands. I was in a, a pretender's cover band called Nikki and the Tattooed Love Boys. And then I decided that it really didn't make sense for me to play other people's music. I needed to play my own music. Sure. And um, and so I had a really fantastic band called Disorderlies with a Y uh, and a wonderful guitar player uh, who really, I think, kind of helped this band move in the direction that it was moving, but he had to leave the band for personal reasons, and I realized that I couldn't actually play my own music. So I could hear my music in my mind, I could sing it out for him, he could translate it into the musical wonderfulness that he could translate into, and then I'd have a song. And so when he left the band, I realized that I couldn't be left without the ability to you know, write my own music, uh, put it into you know, musical guitarness, I don't know if that's a word, and then also teach it to other people that would be playing in my band. So I went on this furious crusade to learn how to play the guitar, and I am like a monster right now. Like, you know, I'm, I've got that guitar in my hand almost at every moment, and, you know, just really working on, on making sure that I can play and not just 
play a little but play really well. And it's it's amazing what practice will do because, like I, I said, I have that guitar in my hand all the time, and I'm sitting on the couch right. while the kids are doing whatever, and, you know, I'm, I'm going through all my major scales and minor scales and skip scales and whatever else. And, you know, and I, I don't even just want to be a, a, a good chord playing rhythm guitar. Like, I'd like to be able to, to kick out some leads anytime I want and shred, you know, if I feel sure. the urge to at any point. So that's wow. kind of been my guitar process, and now I have way too many guitars in my New York City apartment. <laughs> <laughs> I've like, got a Fender, I've got a, you know, a Gibson, I've got, you know, three acoustics. It's just a mess. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That is. Yeah. Only because I yeah. always have such, I, I always like bow down as I'm doing right now and you can't see me. To those that can play music, because clearly I don't know how. I mean, I have absolutely right. no ability in that regard. I can write all sorts of wonderful things or do radio or whatever. But yeah. I can't do absolutely any of that stuff. So it's refreshing to me that people can actually take up something like that and, and learn how to do it and embrace it and take things away from it, you know, spiritually or soulfully, which is very awesome, which is what you've done. Clearly. Now, I know that you've been in the process of working on a new album. I want to talk about uh, where we're at with that, meaning in terms of how long do you think it's going to be before you release something, et cetera. Um, what do we expect to see from that work? Right. Um, well, you know, I have, I, and I gave him a shout out before, uh, my recording engineer slash producer, Rob Talby. And what we've been doing is we've been getting together two hours a week to record. Um, he's got a, a wonderful home studio in his little apartment in uh, the East Village. And every Tuesday from one to three o'clock, I go and we record as much as we possibly can. Um, and we've been doing that for quite some time. So it's amazing what small increments will do because you know in some ways you feel like when you're recording an album you have to sit in the studio for you know a full three days you know 12 hours a day and get everything done and I don't have the time or the money to do that at the moment and neither does he so we've been doing that for you know probably at least eight months and we've got you know almost 10 songs that are almost completely done except for mastering and we're going to figure out how to do that um so I'm not exactly sure what's going to go on that album because I just keep writing stuff and we just keep recording. It's like a never ending process. Um, but I uh, you know it's like, but at some point you have to cut it off. You're like, okay, I'm done. But uh, you know, it, it doesn't feel like there's any, there's any natural point to cut it off, but there will be um, at least an, a, a six to eight song CD coming out at some point soon. Uh, and I don't know exactly okay. when that is, but the, the music, the music is being released online. So, it's not being it's not being denied to the world, but 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 the formal no, album <laughs> album release has not quite happened yet. So, and I'm hoping well, I, that you know that what whenever I do put it out, or even if I figure out how to you know sell the songs that I've already put out, that I'm going to try to start a fund that helps my clients when they're housed, because I I found that sure. you know for the clients that do get housed, they don't have enough money to actually build a home, so they're still sleeping on a mattress on the floor. They might not have pots and pans right. to truly cook for themselves. They might not have you sure. know reliable and good bedding or even a change of bedding, and so you know I just I realize how much it costs to actually start a home um, and I don't think there's a lot of funding for that so I'm hoping to somehow you know use that money in order to create some fund for people that are housed or something of the like you know I'm not 100% sure where it'll go but you know luckily I, I make you know a reasonable enough living that I don't have to you know use this money uh, in order to you know to make a living and to survive so I can put it towards different different uses Okay. Any any luck on, or are we thinking it might be before the end of the year, so you get it up before Christmas time? I'm just curious. Yeah, no, um, um, I, I think that's a possibility. I don't want to pin you. I mean, if it's no. No, 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 no. Okay, I mean, yeah. I, have a, I have a gig coming up, and, you know, and I'll probably have one more before the end of the year. So September 27th, um, my band, Nikki and the yep. Human Element, will be at Rockwood, yeah. uh, which is a great venue uh, on the Lower East Side, uh, 196 Allen Street, for anybody in New York or close to New York. That's the 27th on a Wednesday, uh, 8.45 p.m., and it would be great to see everybody. But uh, so that's this one, and we definitely won't have it out for them. But but I would probably say, you know, early next year, you know, that that's... Okay, that's the safe yeah. window. Yeah. Good. Okay, I, I, I just wanted to make sure I have to put a time put limit on it. Well, I <laughs> no, agree no, with you, good. but, you know, I mean, it's one of those things. Okay, good. Right. Now, 
Next question for you, because obviously, of course, and, and I will mention the gig at the end of this, but I want to do this. What I think is so, so, so cool is that at every gig, she also uses it as a gift giving, so to speak, by that meaning almost like a literal fundraiser, because I know that you've collected over a thousand pairs of socks. So my question to you is, so you think you'll enhance at some point in time, like and say, okay, at the next gig we're going to collect, you know, bring us a pair of pajamas or bring us a pair of shoes or whatever. Do you see this kind of extending out or maybe having a yearly event where you do something like that? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I totally hear what you're saying. Um, you know, the reason why I collect socks is, I mean, there's a particular story behind the socks um, that oh. I had. A, there is, I know. <laughs> a story Ooh. meant for radio. So uh, Ooh, so I had a, a patient who came in uh, on a very cold, wintry day a couple of years ago, and uh, he had frostbite. And it turns out that the day before was one of those a little bit warmer days that were wet and so his feet got wet and then at night it froze and so he sat there in these kind of frozen socks until he could see me the next morning and ended up with frostbite and I thought if he just had another pair of socks to switch to then he probably wouldn't have had this problem and so I just decided that you know that any gig is really you know a time and a place meant to collect something for other people like there's you know no reason to have so many people together just for yourself. So, you know, it's uh, it's always a some kind of fundraising event. And so I had been collecting socks for a long time, but they're easy. You could buy a pair of socks and put them someplace, and they don't take up a right. lot of space. And, you know, I'm in New York City, so I don't have a lot of space to store things. And people seem to like oh, to give know. socks. You know, socks just – people give cute little fuzzy really? bunny socks. They love it. You know, really warm socks, you know, nice knee high something or others. Like, you know, if you okay. look at if you look at my website, I, I've written these sweet sock stories about, you know, how my patients just love them and had taken them you know, what? some of them would hug them to their heart and be you know, like depending Aww. on how fuzzy they were or not. You know, it was very, very, very sweet. So, um That's so the socks and the other thing that I did collect was reading glasses just because as my patients age, they'd been having a hard time, you know, reading consent forms and being able to read whatever they needed to fill out. And so I just would end up giving them my own classes whenever they needed it, and then I would end up not having any classes. So I just decided to ask for some reading glasses too. And people love to give. If you give them something specific to give, they love it. And I bet you didn't know that by coming on this show, you were going to be giving gifts too. Did you know that? No, you know that no. I, I thought presents? the gift was you. I do. <laughs> no, I give out surprises all the time. So at the end oh of the God. show, you're going to find yourself surprised. Just wait for it. Not here yet, but just wait for I'm it. I'm waiting. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, you're going to have to wait a little bit longer because we have a few <laughs> couple other things to cover here. So okay. since you're talking about significance of stuff, and this is really super important because one of the things that really gets under my goat, because like right now, if you follow me, you already know that I have my bug in my bonnet about three particular things. First okay. of all, it's this guy, this Joel Olstein in Texas, because it's driving me nuts. Second of all, I'm on the Scientology bandwagon. I'm having three people on my show that used to be Scientologists, and it's going to get wild around here. It's going to get a little crazy about the Scientology thing. But my other thing is I have gone and I visited different um, Holocaust centers, and so the Holocaust and everything relative to this. So I want to talk about pictures, because I know that this was – this particular song and video were inspired by um, Nazi propaganda. I think you were mentioning something like that. So please tell your listening audience about pictures and, and how you were prompted to put that together, because I think it's important. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a couple of different prompts. Um, a couple of years back, I was staying at a friend's house. He had a, a house on a lake, and uh, my husband and I were staying there, and we saw all these great pictures of him and his brothers and his brother's family and his parents, and they were all standing on a dock, you know, around a nice kayak, and they looked so happy, and I saw picture after picture of this. And then I called this friend to say, wow, you know, it just looks like you've had such great memories in this house. And he said that I had no idea about the angst behind those pictures at this point he wasn't even talking to his brothers kind of thing and so that was the little seedling for the the story um and then my daughter and i uh went on a great mother-daughter vacation so I, i seem to go with 
either my son or my daughter, depending on who's available, leave my husband at home right. to hold down the fort and work. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, so um, so we were in the Czech Republic, and we went to a Nazi propaganda camp called Terezin, and that camp was specifically put there so that they could take pictures of uh, Jewish prisoners in benign settings so that they could send that to the Red Cross and, uh, and kind of tell the world that things weren't quite as bad as they might have been hearing. Um, and then it kind of it cemented the idea that I needed to write this song. And I think it's kind of apropos for whatever's going on with our Facebook world, with our social media world. People love to put up things that, you know, that look good, that make them happy. Every once in a while I'll see a, a darker post about somebody who's looking for a little bit of community or a little bit of help with something, you know, but mostly it looks like everybody's lives are going really, really well and they're all very exciting. And the truth is, is that people are really struggling right now, you know, I mean, for many, many right. reasons. So I just, I thought it would be an interesting thing to, you know, be able to, you know, look at those pictures and know a little bit of the story behind them. Sure. I, I agree with you 150%, I have to say. Oh. No, that brings us to our second song, which I'm I'm, I'm not, why don't you guess? What did I pick? It's to be good. <laughs> Are you playing Changes? Oh, no. <laughs> You're not. No, I'm not. Oh. You want me to play How Changes? Because I, I could, but that's not what I picked. I did not Oh, uh, okay. That. Definitely not. Yeah, I'm assuming you're playing Changes. No, I picked Rockstar. <laughs> you picked Rockstar. Oh. <laughs> it's indicative of my guess. So it's kind of like, duh, what else am I supposed to play? It's indicative yeah. of you. So I need you to give me a little lead in. So tell the folks what this song is all about as if the, the title didn't give it away. But tell them a little bit about the song before I play it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So you're not playing pictures. No. You are playing Rockstar. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> We're ta- we are talking about pictures, but I'm playing oh, Rockstar because okay, I can, damn it, because it's my show. <laughs> it's your show. <laughs> I just I can do keep whatever up. I want. So, yeah, but I am changing Absolutely. Rockstar. Absolutely. You totally I'm can playing do whatever Rockstar, you want. But first, yeah, tell them, tell them about your song. Oh, I mean, Rockstar is really a show about going after big dreams, and I am a huge proponent of people going after their biggest hopes and dreams and falling times and not staying in your comfort zone. And uh, just I'm trying to live my life that way, and I want to back everybody to support them in living their lives that way. I mean, we don't gain anything by keeping anything small, you know, not even comfort anymore. So so that that is what Rockstar is about. And it's an awesome song. So I'll give you a break, and then we're going to play Rockstar, and I'll see if folks can listen to her one more time. So here we go.
what I mean? Do you see why she scares me? She can even scream louder than I can. She can sing louder than I can. She can talk louder than I can. You scare the hell out of me. Oh, my gosh. It's still your show, though. I know. It's still my rules. still my game. It's still yeah. your rules. still so, your show. So now we have the business stuff to deal with. Now that I've asked her every question under the sun so we can get to surprises and galore. And yay! Um, that I'm fading because I need more medication. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're not feeling well. You're doing really is. well, by the way. Well, you know, I'm in entertainment, so we learn how to bullshit very easily. Um, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> you know what it is? And I say this all the time, and I mean it. The, the closer that I am to the guests or, or, or the relationship that I have with them, I, I always put a bigger bar for myself. Not that I don't care about all my guests, which I do, but there's a bigger bar for me in terms of doing well and, and expecting things of myself. But, no, for some reason I got home yesterday and I was, like, laying here, and I'm like, God, I got no energy, and I feel like junk, and I just laid around all night. And I took a day cold today, and it's not helping much. So I'm like, maybe I'll go get some Chinese. I might do that. Um, you know, in Milwaukee it's a little bit different. You have to get in a car. Like in New York, you can go to China. <laughs> I have to get yeah, in the car true. here and, like, do this stuff, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. So there's a couple business stuff we want to talk about. Do not want to forget this. First and foremost, folks, September 27th at 9 o'clock, she's going to be at the Rockwood Music Hall. If you're in New York City, it's 196 Allen Street. If you order your tickets ahead of time, it's $10. If you get to the door, it's going to be $15. So it's advantageous to go off and get that um, and, and see her at Rockwood Music Hall, obviously. Now, Second thing is, I'm going to read off a bunch of different places that I found you at. When I get done, just let me know if I missed anything, okay? Oh, sh- oh my name God. Of, I, okay. God. Johnny Journalist forgot to mention the obvious. The name of the band is Nikki and the Human Element, because I think we forgot to mention that. Yes, that's right. I did forget. Nikki and the mm-hmm. Human Element is the name. Website is Nikki, and Nikki is spelled N-I-K-K-I, so it's NikkiHumanElement.com. Nikki has a Facebook page, but first of all, she's a person, so she has a personal page. And her name is Nikki, and the last name is spelled N-E-R-E-T-I-N. Just want to make sure you got that. There's also a business page for the band, and that's, again, Nikki and the Human Element. She's on LinkedIn, YouTube, Sonic Bids, Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, and her Twitter handle is at Human Element. Also, if you want to check out some of the good deeds they're doing, www.institute.org. Any other place that I forgot? Anything else we want to mention? Uh, you you mentioned places that I didn't even know about. Let me tell you, I just Damn. kept signing up and for And another things. guest oh said that. <laughs> yeah, people come on here all the time. They're like, oh, my God, you found that? Duh, I'm a journalist. Isn't that what I'm right. supposed to do? That's yeah. my job. Yeah. Okay. Well, so now I, we're I at the do point where I I'm get proud of and that I don't that I would mind getting out there, like honestly. So so everything oh, is out there. Okay. So don't yeah. let's not talk about the porn tape she did. No. Oh, okay, sorry, we won't make that. There's none. That, I, I just swear. had to do it. I had to do it. I'm like, was she listening to that? Okay. Now we have we've come to the part of the interview where I get to tell two more things to do, which is this. First of all, to any of the people that are listening in to you. And um, listening to me, of course, about two hours after the show is done, it becomes an archived episode. And I'll send you the link for that. And I also put it on YouTube so everybody gets it on my YouTube channel. And you can go ahead and put it on your YouTube channel if you want to because it's not, it's basically our audio turned into video, so to speak. So give it about two hours and I'll give you a copy of that. So the only other two things we need to do is I get to give you the surprises and then I get to tell you what I think of you because no <laughs> guest comes on this show without me telling them what I think. But before I forget, my new question, see, my big question on the show used to always be, now I know you have Michael Madsen's cell phone number and you're going to give it to me, but now I know Michael Madsen and I have his cell phone, so I don't have to ask that. So I'm going to ask you my other question, and I know the answer is going to be yes, or I might have to hang up on you. So make sure you give me the right answer here. So there are five people in this universe besides you that I want to interview. And one of those names on that list is Cher. And I know you're going to say, <laughs> I have her cell phone number, and I'm going to give it to you. Here we go. I was born in the wagon of a traveling show. I am her. You didn't know that. No. Um, no. I love you, but no. No? Oh, darn. She's killing me. And I'm guessing you probably don't have her cell phone number. No, but I will find it for you. I'm very yeah. resourceful, but so Good are answer. you. That's an awesome answer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So now that you've I turned me that. down and disappointed me and made me cry, Oh, no, but you didn't hang up. That was good. Yay. Yay. Yeah, what am I going to do? I'm on radio. I can't really hang up on you because I'd be unprofessional. I could just not talk to you for like a day, but that's okay. So here's the surprises. (gasps) Dun, 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 dun. So here we go. Surprise number one. Um, Because you're not in Wisconsin, I can't invite you to this, and uh, you're not making that million dollars. Otherwise, I know you'd get on a plane tomorrow and do this. 
But I know this. Um, September 27th and 28th, I'm doing a two-day. I'm sc- A lot of the films that are at my film festival in New York City, I'm screening here in Wisconsin. So I mm. did like a little mini event. So at the end of this month, I'm going to be showing all these different films, and I'm going to be doing a little Q&A, and we're doing a, f- a few fun things here, obviously, just to get my people here in Wisconsin to get to know my people in New York City. So I got to thinking yesterday, well, let's do this. Let's do a twofold. So here's what we're going to do, Nikki. When I do my little two two-day thing, I'm going to collect things like chocks, and I'm going to bring a whole two or three boxes to New York City with me. Oh, my God, I love it. That's number one. Oh, my God, you're going to have to pay for extra baggage, but I love it. That sounds great. Thank you. I'm going to drive there, smarty pants, because I have my own (laughs) film festival, so that means i got to sit in a stupid car for 15 hours. Yeah, thanks, Cindy. But I'm willing to do it because guess what? I got socks, and I got clothes, and the homeless don't. (laughs) So if the least I can do is collect socks at a two-day event, I'm doing it. Okay, Number thanks. two, it gets better, it gets better. The grab bag okay. gets better. I'm excited. So okay. I was sitting and thinking to myself, I'm about as broke as a joke as you all. However, I think this is a good opportunity, so let me finish. So it just so happens that I'm doing this film festival in New York City that I think you might know about. Yes, folks, yeah. it's the last week of October at the Producers Club. And conveniently, I seem to have an open slot for someone to come and play for an hour during the event. Not the open jam, but actually a band to come and play. And I have about wow. $5 I can offer you, but <laughs> in return for that, you will be meeting 20-some different directors that do take music for films and all sorts of networking. You get to see me, and we get to do a sock drive a second time because then oh. we'll collect them right there in New York City too. Okay. But you can mull that one over. You don't have to definitely say no, yes or no. You can think that one over. So I'm like, okay, okay. that would be absolutely awesome. <laughs> okay. So that's number two. That'd be like asking me to marry you, you on, you know, <laughs> on that. Uh, it's TV. kind of like, like well, do I want to make that commitment? <laughs> like, but what I'm are you like, going to say? <laughs> well, exactly. So I want you to know that I'm trying to, to benefit your cause immensely just because no, of the fact it. that I, I don't totally really think it. It, it totally, totally doesn't take more than, you know, one or two days to rally a bunch of people together and say, hey, let's get a bunch of stuff together because this is important. You are really doing very important work, not just with your music, but you're trying to make a stand. So I'm like, okay, this is awesome. Number three is, I was just wondering if a few times I could show your video at my film festival. Oh, my God, I would love that. Oh, that would be fantastic. Is that okay? Oh, my God, Because here's the thing. Every time I'm showing a film, I'm showing the screener for Reliving Maryland, and that's Maryland Monroe. So I'm like, of course, I'm going to repeat show it, like, through a bunch of different showings before we show films. I'll show that. But there is space for me to easily show it three or four different times. So I'm like, yeah, let's get that great. Oh, my God, I love it. Isn't this exciting? You're talking about the rapid resumption. You didn't even know it. so exciting. You You come on the show, and it's like Christmas. It's like Hanukkah. Hanukkah and Christmas. (laughs) Wait, I mean eight, then. Eight And I'm not even Jewish. I am not even Jewish right now. You could be. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks. I love you, too. Yeah. So now the very That's last thing compliment. we're going to do. That is high praise. Thank you. Yeah. The last thing I get to do is I get to tell you what I think of you. And this is the only part, by the way, of the show that is not scripted. I do not write this. That means mm. it's right off the cuff. And it comes right from the heart. And so that's why I think it's most important because folks have not met you, so they don't know you. And I've had the, the blessed good fortune of doing so. So that's the last thing I get to do. So now that you've had your surprises and your wonderful interview and I still have a voice, I'm going to tell you what I think of you because tomorrow I may not have a voice for my next show. So oh. these are my thoughts and impressions of Nikki Niggerton. See, she can just sit back and listen to this. As I mentioned to you folks, the first time I met her was a very unexpected day. Um, uh, it was right after Gay Pride, actually, in New York City. And I met her, and I was just so delighted to sit next to her, and we embraced each other in terms of we spent time together, we went out and ate afterwards, and it was a wonderful experience. Now let me tell you what I've learned from her. She is one of the few people I met in New York City, and, and granted, this number has gotten so much bigger since time has, has gone on, that just – immediately, here's my number, call me if you need to, call me if you need anything, how can I help you with this? That, my friends, is a rarity because let me tell you something, it's not very often that you come across people that are giving of their hearts and their heads. By that, they keep you in mind, they keep you in heart, they're willing to extend themselves to you with basically absolutely no benefit to you. So that was the first thing that I noticed. Second of all, she's got awful beautiful looking. So she's got that little raspy voice thing, and she's damn pretty, okay? So just so you folks know, when you meet her, she has that presence. And by that, what I mean is that her beauty radiates from outside to inside and backwards and sideways. She's an absolutely beautiful butterfly. That's what I would call her. Why? Because she composes music that has messages to it that touch her soul and touch her silly side. That's what I call it, too. She makes me laugh. She makes me cry. 
She makes me feel like I'm a better and more empowered person just by being around her, whether that's on the phone or in an email or a text message. One of the things that touched me most is the fact that she's dedicated her life's work to help everyone else but herself. That whole selflessness totally makes me believe that she has a soul that shines 24-7. If you don't go to see her on the 27th of September, I'm going to try to use all of my bag of tricks to have her come at the end of October. So if she says, no, I'm going to have to tell her. But no, seriously, on a very, very serious note, I, I can't possibly tell you how many tides of good blessings I've had just by meeting her for the very first time. And know this, my friend, that my door is open to you, my heart is open to you, and most importantly, my show is open to you. Any point in time, if you feel I've done a good job and you want to come back. That's oh what I think of you. I'm about ready to cry. <laughs> I mean, I am. Why do people come on my show and cry? Come on, folks. Put well, it out. It's, you know, Put it people out. are not used to other people saying wonderful things about them. We have kind of grown oh, up in God. a culture where we just point out where things are not okay. And I just really Did appreciate it. Did I just say bitch? So Would that you. have been better? No, no, it's, no. It's all that. Are you better now? Crying I mean, is a, that, I mean, crying is that is like a good better? thing. No, no, no. I'm all for crying. Let me tell you, if it doesn't mean anything to you, then you won't cry. But this truly meant something I to me, know. So thank no, you. I know. No, I totally yeah. understand. And now, like I said, that's important that people know that because there's another side of you, and, and not everyone gets a chance to see that. So please know that all of that is very true, and certainly mull it over. Think about the festival. Think about that stuff. We'll have to talk about how to coordinate putting the thing on a disc so that I can – um show it and if you want me to show it in your milwaukee that's fine i can show it in between screenings too but you got to get me a copy because i have to be able to have a copy to show here in town before i get to new york city of course and certainly don't be a stranger because obviously i don't know if i can make it the 27th i don't know if i'll be in new york but if i am I'm no there. you're not going to be in if new york not, you're going to be there yeah you're going to be doing your oh, crap festival. oh i just said it duh well i'm yeah. a bit my thing <laughs> yeah but you could be here with me if you send me the rapid response to play then you could tactically be here Wrapping yeah, away I'll and doing your you. little thing. Absolutely. I'll send the word it. I have like a Google Drive stop. thing. Yeah. <laughs> Just All right. Now you're going to get off my show. No, yes. This I'm going to so finish up my show. Yes. I, I, I'm yeah. glad that you were happy. You'll have to let me know what you think after the fact. And yeah, like I, I said, will. send me the stuff so I know what to do about that. Think about the festival. It's not like it's happening tomorrow, and you can let me know about that as far as that goes. And okay. hey, I miss you, and I and I hope I see you soon. I'll let you know when yeah, I come Yeah, I hope so, too. I definitely I, I right. love the thought of you coming to New York, and I'll definitely see you when you Aww. come in. So thank you. Thanks, Thanks for everything. I really All love right. it. I'm Anytime. glad it worked out because we went through like hell and high water to try to figure oh it out. Oh my God! So, right. so glad see, you did. See the dedication, folks. See the things I do. I tried so yeah. hard for these people, but we got it done. Yeah. We did. We got it yeah. done. Yeah, we totally right. got it done. Now go away. All right. I'll speak to you soon. <laughs> now go away. Second, go die wait, on my wait, couch. Big kiss. All right, much love. Mwah. Mwah. <gasps> Kissing you back. Right. I'll talk to you soon. All right, love. I'll see you soon. All right, take care. All Thank right. you so much. Bye, everybody. Anytime, love. Tell me that she's not fascinating, right? Nikki Nerdin is the bomb. One more time, I want to remind everybody. September 27th, 9 o'clock, and that's 9 o'clock Eastern time, mind you, at the Rockwood Music Hall. It's located at 196 Allen Street. $10 for pre-tickets, meaning pre-purchase ahead of time, and then, of course, $15 at the door. Hopefully she won't get sold out, so get your butts out there and go ahead and get tickets. Again, one more time, the website is Nikki, N-I-K-K-I, humanelement.com. Um, her business site, meaning that what she's doing director-wise, it's www.institute.org. She's on Reverb Nation, SoundCloud, LinkedIn, YouTube, Sonic Bids. She has a personal page on Facebook. And, of course, Nikki and the Human Element is the band page. The Twitter handle, of course, at Human Element. Again, much love and much thanks to Nikki Nerdin for being so patient and coming on the show. want to remind everybody tomorrow, Tony Chen is going to be on at 4.30 Central Standard Time, musical composer and giant in the industry. Um, I can't wait to talk to him. So, folks, before I go off and die, I'm going to go get some Chinese or make some food or do whatever and try to relax. You guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much for listening in. Thanks for participating, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. I pronounce you. Bye, wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions. What you doing? Ran out of space on my phone, so I'm deleting some stuff. Bye, singing dog. Bye, goal. 
I pronounce you by wedding ceremony. Stop. At Metro PCS, you get two free phones with twice as much memory. Really? Don't say bye to your memories. Switch to Metro PCS and get two free LG K20 Plus phones with 32 gigs when you switch two lines. Metro PCS. Wireless. Figured out. Coverage not available in some areas. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See store for details and terms and conditions.